2008 Mini Cooper rear brake pads and rotor replacement. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive. I'm going to walk you through the steps of replacing that. To get started, we're going to get the vehicle up in the air. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands. You also want to make sure that the emergency brake is not engaged. Go ahead and remove both rear wheels. So these are the brake pads and rotors that we're going to be using in, on this vehicle. I will link this up in the description of the video. That way if you guys need to pick those up, you can get those. So Mini Cooper have these uh, lug stud style lug nuts. So when you take the last one off, the wheels likely to fall off. So what we use to combat that is a uh, wheel stud pilot tool. This one has a, um, a 14 by 125 uh, thread. And you'll just take out one of the lug nuts and you'll screw in the pilot tool. And then when you remove the, all the lug nuts, the wheel won't fall off on you. And then when you go to put the wheel back on, it's easy to slide it over the stud and line up, line up the bolt holes and you can start the bolts. I'll leave a link in the description of the video for the uh, tool in case you guys are interested in uh, learning more about that or picking it up. Okay, now that the wheel's off, I'm working on the passenger side of the vehicle. And the reason why is this side has the uh, pad wear indicator on it. And the opposite side does not, only one side has it. So I'm going to demonstrate this side. And then uh, after the, I demonstrate this one side, it's going to be the exact same process on the opposite side minus the uh, pad wear indicator. So with that said, we're going to get started by removing this, this uh, clip here. You can use a flat blade screwdriver, stick it in here like that, kind of give it a little twist, pop it out. Once you get it out, you can go ahead and just work it. Right here is the bolts for the calipers, top and bottom. So there's little dust caps we need to pop off. So you can either use your fingers or a flat blade screwdriver and pop these little caps off top and bottom. Now you're going to need a 7 millimeter Allen socket and a ratchet and you're going to remove the uh, the Allen bolt inside here, top and bottom to crack the one here free and then the one here free and take the bolt all the way out. Once you got the slide pins out you're going to set these aside for now and then in a little bit we're going to clean these up and lubricate these before we put them back Next, in. Next I'm going to take a flat blade screwdriver like this and stick it here in the caliper pry the caliper off. There's going to be a little bit of a lip and sometimes you can put a, the screwdriver in here and pry a little bit and that'll press the piston in just a little bit but these are the type of pistons that you screw in so it, it requires a special tool and I'll show you that in just a second. And for right now you want to pry the caliper off. Now that we've got the caliper off we need to pry the brake pads out and they have these little metal clips on there that you'll pull up and pull them over the lips of the uh, caliper. So you'll pop the pad off like that. Next you'll take the uh, brake uh, bleeder screw, take a little uh, cap, pop that off, and then you'll pop the, uh, the wire loom that's uh, wrapped around the uh, brake bleeder here, you pop that off, and then you're going to follow it up, and you're going to pop it, all the attachments where it's attached, you're going to pop those off like, like this, and keep following it around until you get to the uh, where it's plugged in at. Which is going to be, you're going to follow the control arm in, and just behind the control arm, you'll see the connector back here. So you pop the connector out, and you'll unplug it. And in this case, it's the black connector, not the blue one. The blue one's for the ABS sensor, so you're going to unplug the black connector. And it just has a little squeeze tab, and you'll pull. Once you get it unplugged, you'll just pull it through. And then you'll pull your pad out like this, and pull the wire through. So now we need to press this piston back into the bore of the caliper and on this particular one it actually screws in and it takes our it requires and the tool looks like this and I'll link it up in the uh, description of the video so what you do is you find the proper little adapter like this that fits in the uh, in the in the holes here this particular one comes all apart like this so for, for, for uh, storage so you slide the uh, adapter over like this and you're going to it may be out like this and you're going to screw it all the way in as far as you can like that slip it over the caliper like that and then you insert those little pins into the holes once the pins are inserted in the holes then you're going to spin this nut and you're going to loosen it so it's going to you're going to tighten this one in and loosen this one out so once it's snug in there like expand it out on this particular tool it's supposed to have a uh, a little handle here but it's broken off so I'm just going to use my screwdriver and stick it in here and you're going to spin this in at the same time you're going to back it up with a wrench and you're going to spin this one counterclockwise 
And when you spin this one in clockwise, it'll turn the piston in, and then as you spin this one clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, it'll press it in at the same time. And we're gonna do this all without opening the bleeder screw. We're gonna leave it closed. And what that's gonna do is gonna push the brake fluid back in the, up into the master cylinder, so you need to remove a few ounces of brake fluid so it doesn't uh, overspill into the uh, brake, into the uh, engine bay. So I'm gonna take a little turkey baster and suck a few ounces of brake fluid out. And uh, also what I'm gonna do is check the condition of the brake fluid while I'm doing this. That way when we press the calipers in, it doesn't overspill into the, into the engine bay. And as you spin this one in clockwise, I recommend you go small little quarter turns and then back this out counterclockwise, a quarter turn, and then quarter turn, a quarter turn. And then you're gonna push it in all the way to the piston is uh, flush like that. I will link this tool up in the description of the video. That way you can get that. Now we need to remove the caliper bracket. And to do that, there's two 13 millimeter bolts that are on the back here. So you're gonna get the 113 here and the uh, 13 up top up here. The 15 millimeters are for the bearings, so don't remove those, just the two 13 millimeter bolts. And I'm gonna use my Milwaukee uh, three inch drive with cordless ratchet here. This thing kicks butt if you guys haven't seen this. I recommend you check them out. Uh, these things work amazing. They, they save you so much time. I'll leave a link for this also in the description of the video. And now I'm gonna prep this bracket by taking a wire brush like this and scrubbing out the channels on the, uh, on the bracket now here. Now we're gonna remove the brake rotor and to do that you're gonna need a T50 Torx bit and you're gonna need an impact screwdriver like this. And you're going to strike the end of the, the uh, screwdriver and it has a mechanism inside that will, will loosen the uh, screw. So once you hit it a few times, it'll loosen up the uh, set screw here. And once the set screw is loose, then you can go ahead and remove the rotor. Now we're going to take our replacement rotor and if it's coated with oil, from, uh, I recommend you wash that off of brake cleaner. Also when you have your rotor off, if your hub is rusty, I recommend you use a wire brush and clean it up or sandpaper and clean that up. That way the rotor fits nice and uh, snug against the hub. After getting the hub cleaned up, you can go ahead and reinstall your rotor and then the set screw and you just tighten that up till it's snug. Now we're gonna take the caliper bracket that we cleaned up with a wire brush and we're gonna reinstall it back on. But before I do, I put a little blue thread locker on the uh, bolts. It's a glue that helps prevent the bolts from backing off. And the brand we use is Permatex uh, Blue Thread Locker. I'll leave a link for this in the description also. And to get these bolts started, I just put it in my extension in a socket like this and slip it through the back. And once you get these in there, you can go ahead and torque these down to 48 foot. And now we're going to put the brake pads on. And uh, we're going to put the sensor, uh, lining sensor on after we get it all back together. So it has these little clips on here that have to fit around the lip on the caliper here. So you, you may even have to push the boot back a little bit like this. So the way I do it is I get the top lip right here to go over first. So I kind of angle it like that and hook it. And then you... You hook one side here and it's kind of spring loaded. So you'll push it inwards and then this clip right here, this spring will pop around the lip on the inside. So as you can see, I got the top here and then the back side back here hooked. And then I'll, with my thumb, I'll push it towards the front of the vehicle and it, uh, it'll clear that front tab and it'll pop over the lip of the, uh, of the piston. And now the pad will be hooked onto the piston like that. Then you'll take the outer pad and slip it on the bracket like this. Also, I like to take a little bit of the seal glide right here and put it on the back of the shims right here. And that helps reduce squeaking. Next, what I'm gonna do is to take the slide pins here and I'm gonna put a thin layer of this grease all over the pins like this and massage it in there. And then I'm gonna put the pins through the caliper and I'm gonna work that grease. So I'm gonna work this back and forth until, I, until these pins slide nice and freely like that. And I'll do the both top and bottom. And then I'll poke them through like this and I'll take a little bit of the blue thread locker and I'll put a few little dabs on there like that and then uh, I'll wipe off a little excess that put a little too much there and then I'll slide it back in like that and then I'll put the caliper back on over the uh, and I'll start the two bolts and tighten those down I'll torque those down to 20 foot pounds now that the calipers are torqued back down I'm going to take the little dust caps reinstall those top and bottom next i'm going to reinstall this little rattle clip here and that hooks in the hole like this and what i do is i hook it right here and i use my finger and pry it around the lip like that see if i can do this one handed once you get them both in like that 
Now we're gonna reinstall our uh, brake lining sensor. So we're gonna take this end of it and with the little nipple side like that, it's gonna face out towards the pad and you'll put it in there and you'll just push it in like that until it seats. Then you'll wrap this around and hook it over the, uh, the ble bleeder screw and you'll put the rubber cap back on. And then you'll just keep routing around and you'll plug the little, the catches back onto where you, the way they came off. So they just, you just press them on. And then you'll route it around back underneath the control arm and plug it in. If you plug it back in, you're going to make sure that they're resecured back into the little catches inside there. Now you're going to duplicate the exact same process, except for you won't have to deal with the uh, pad lining sensor on the opposite side. Then you'll put your wheels back on and torque those down. Lower the vehicle down. You're going to pump the brake pedal six or seven times. That's going to pump that brake fluid back into the calipers. And uh, doing it this way, you won't have to bleed the brakes after we're done. But as a disclaimer, I always like to recommend if the pedal feels funny to you, bleed the brake system. After you're done pumping your brake pedal, you're going to recheck your brake fluid level. To get the brake pad warning indicator off, you'll have to plug in a scan tool. And you'll have to uh, go into your brake system and clear that light. And if you guys don't have that, then you just drive it down to your local repair shop and tell them, ask them to uh, reset that light for you. And uh, that'll complete the brake job on a uh, 2008 Mini. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my video. Encourage you to subscribe and invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And also to remind you that I will be linking up all the parts and tools that I use in this video. So if you need any of that, look for that there. Thank you again for watching.